Hello, everyone, and welcome to our program today. Keith Gomez, our presenter, is a student pilot. He's got 68 hours, and if you ever want to see him smile, and he's got a really good smile, ask him what it's like to fly the Bahamas. Today, he's going to talk to you about those experiences which he's personally taken part in. But as a, an aviation specialist in the Ministry of Tourism, Keith can give you a broad outline of the joys of flying the Bahamas. Welcome, Keith. Thank you, Kathleen. Good morning, good morning. First of all, I'd like to thank Kathleen and the staff here at the FAA Production Studios for having us here to speak on flying the islands of the Bahamas. Flying the islands of the Bahamas is very easy and it's very practical flying from here in South Florida to the Bahamas. First and foremost, the islands of the Bahamas lies only 46 miles off the coast of Florida, a very short distance and a very short hop. But I, before we go into the presentation, I'll give you a little background on myself and my staff. Again, as Kathleen mentioned, my name is Keith Gomez, and I'm in charge of aviation for the Bahamas Ministry of Tourism. Our job at the Ministry of Tourism is to make it easier and accessible for aviators like yourself to fly the islands of the Bahamas. Whether you're departing from the northeastern United States or the west coast, we want to ensure that all pilots interested in flying the islands of the Bahamas has a very safe and enjoyable experience. It is a very short distance to fly from anywhere in South Florida, again, to the Bahamas. Very short, very easy, and very, very accessible. First and foremost, as mentioned, flying down to the Bahamas is an extremely short distance. If you're departing from South Florida, for example, for Lauderdale, Bimini, or uh, departing uh, to the region, Andrus, or departing from Miami, the distance flying from southern Florida to the Bahamas is only 46 nautical miles. Departing from West Palm Beach, all points further north, the maximum amount of distance it will take you departing to Grand Bahama Island is going to be about 60 nautical miles. Very short distance to fly. What you can expect when flying the islands of the Bahamas is beautiful scenery, a multitude of airports. There are over 60 airports welcoming general aviation to the islands of the Bahamas. What we in the Ministry of Tourism have done is ensure that working with our government agencies, Bahamas Civil Aviation and Bahamas Customs, it's to ensure that your experience in flying these islands is very enjoyable and very easy. We want to make sure that you get to enjoy all that we have to offer. So the procedures to clear Bahamas Customs and Immigration is extremely short and extremely simple. First and foremost, a question that most aviators have in flying the islands of the Bahamas is, are there any fees involved with flying to the Bahamas? Do I have to pay an entrance fee? Do I have to pay flying from island to island? The answer to that question, ladies and gentlemen, is no. As of 2003, what the Bahamas Islands uh, has done is ensure that what we have is called the Bahamas Private Pilot Bill of Rights. The Private Pilot Bill of Rights ensures that you, the aviator, are aware of what you're entitled to in advance of flying down to the Bahamas. What we've ensured is that there are no landing fees for general aviation aircraft under 6,000 pounds at any government airport. There are no tie-down fees in flying to the islands of the Bahamas, again, for private pilots under 6,000 pounds. If you clear Bahamas Customs Immigration at a private airport, you may be required to pay a small landing fee in the range of $4 to $12. Very minimal cost in flying down to the Bahamas. What we've also done is ensure that there is no overtime charge for Bahamas Customs or Immigration. Again, the point is to make it very easy and very accessible for you to enjoy what we have to offer in the Bahamas. Fuel cost is a major concern that most aviators have. Am I going to be charged $20 more than what I pay here in Florida? Am I going to be charged $30 more? The answer, no. Fuel costs in the Bahamas are very similar to those offered here in South Florida at uh, most of your FBOs. For example, an FBO in, let's just say, uh, Fort Lauderdale may charge you around $4.10 for a gallon of fuel. In the Bahamas, you may expect, be expected to pay in the range of $4.30 to $4.40, minimal increases. If you fly down to the southern Bahamas, you may expect an additional 10 to 20% increase on that price. Again, our prices are very similar to what's expected here in southern Florida. We in the islands of the Bahamas are investing in infrastructure and logistics for you in general aviation. We're upgrading our airport runways, we're upgrading the communication systems within the islands of the Bahamas to ensure that you, the general aviator, have the same facilities that you are used to here in Florida. We have made available uh, what we call the blue telephone system. This telephone system is available specifically for general aviators to ensure that you are able to communicate with the United States Customs and Immigration prior to making your departure 
from the Bahamas to the United States. As you know, it's a requirement to contact U.S. Customs at least one hour prior to your departure to the United States. So what we have done in the islands of the Bahamas is ensure that every single port of entry and every airport where you have to clear Bahamas Customs has a dedicated phone service just for general aviation use. That phone is only for general aviators to make sure that you are able to make that call to return to the United States. We've invested in better radio coverage throughout the islands of the Bahamas. Our RCO system is up and running as of April 15th. Prior to this, uh, during the period of January to April, most of our RCO systems were undergoing upgrades. That has now been completed and that system is up and running. So we have excellent radio coverage throughout the islands of the Bahamas for you to communicate to both Nassau Radio and Miami Flight Service. We want to ensure that the communication system is up and running, safety first. Night flying is a concern that a lot of uh, aviators have in flying down to the Bahamas. Suppose I'm departing from the Northeast or the Midwest, and my arrival time to Southern Florida dictates that I get into the Bahamas after 6 p.m. If you're not aware, flying down to the Bahamas, our rules and regulations stipulate that for most out island flying, VFR night flying is prohibited. There is night service available at some airports, but those light service available are de really dedicated just for emergency use only. The only two islands that has a uh, night service would be Nassau International and Grand Bahama International <coughs> Airport. Those two services have ILS capabilities. Outside of that, if you fly any other island in the Bahamas, you're restricted to the VFR night flying rule, which prohibits you from night flying in the Bahamas. What we're trying to do now is make sure that the ILS system is extended throughout the rest of the islands of the Bahamas. As of today, there are only five other airports within the islands of the Bahamas that have uh, lights at night. Those two, those five airports that I indicated are not ILS capable. So you're going to be restricted to just Nassau and Grand Bahama for IFR flying or night flying in the Bahamas. We've changed our rules and regulations from ICAO to the FAA to more or less make sure that you, the general aviator, since this is where the base of our traffic comes from, have the same rules and regulations in the Bahamas that you're used to here in the United States. We want to ensure the transition is very, very easy and very simple. There's not a different set of rules and regulations to fly by in the Bahamas than you're used to here in America. Very important note is that at most government airports, uh, I'm sorry, let me phrase that. At all government airports, private pilots are welcome, and the rules and regulations that I mentioned to you earlier do apply. Private airports in the Bahamas, as I indicated, may charge you, may charge you a very small, very minimal landing fee to clear Bahamas Customs and Immigration. However, very important to note is that all of the private airports in the Bahamas do welcome the visiting aviator. They do welcome you to come by, and if you do happen to land and clear customs and you'd like to take a tour of the island, most likely the owner of the island will uh, accommodate you and uh, provide you with some transportation to see the scenery. Again, it's not a problem to visit a private island. Simply indicate to the, uh, air, the island manager or the airport manager that you, at the time of clearing customs and immigration, would like to tour the facility, and they are very accommodating. At all airports of entry with Bahamas Customs and Immigration, you are required to clear at your first landing in the islands of the Bahamas. In other words, if you're applying a destination in the southern Bahamas, but your fuel range limits how far you do get to fly down to the Bahamas, we ask that you plan your trip to coincide that your first stop is at an airport of entry and you are able to clear Bahamas Customs and Immigration. The hardest part of your trip flying to the islands of the Bahamas is going to be departing from a point of origin within the United States to southern Florida. That's the hardest part of your trip. Again, we lie only 46 miles off the coast of Florida, a very short hop. If you're departing from, let's just say, for example, Miami, Fort Lauderdale, by the time you get airborne, you can almost see Bimini in the distance. It's that close. It's that easy to fly to Bahamas. Rules and regulations, you must have in the Bahamas 12-inch numbers. Okay, these are our rules that we're adopting. It is law. You must have at least 12 inch numbers to fly the islands of the Bahamas. Reason being, again, we want to make sure we're able to identify aircraft within every islands of the Bahamas. And the point of the matter is that we're trying, again, to adopt the same rules that you apply to here in the United States. So there's no stipulation or there's no erroneous information regarding the end numbers. We want to ensure that the transition is very smooth, very easy. The same standards that you apply here in America we apply in the Bahamas. There's no need to depart from the airport of entry here in Florida to get to the Bahamas. 
If your plane is parked in the back of your yard, you simply file a flight plan, get airborne, and head to the Bahamas. It's that easy. You file a simple international flight plan. The IFR flight plan is mandatory, mandatory, if you plan on landing in the Bahamas after sunset. Again, usual sunset time in the Bahamas ranges from 5 to 7 p.m., depending on whether it's Eastern Standard or Daylight Saving. Now, the point of the matter is that you must ensure that if you if your arrival time is going to be after sunset, you have already applied your IFR flight plan. So if you plan on arriving on a VFR flight plan, try to coincide your trip to land during that time frame when you will not be charged or be asked to file an international flight plan, an IFR. If you're using firearms or taking firearms with you, very important, please, please, please register your firearms with U.S. Customs prior to your departure. It's not a problem if you sleep more comfortable with Becky under the pillow. That's not a problem in the Bahamas. However, please ensure that it's registered prior to departing. We don't want any surprises. All of a sudden, there's a Black Hawk escorting you down at Nassau International. Okay? Make sure you register your firearms prior to going to the Bahamas. Aircraft custom decal, very important. When departing United States airspace to go to a foreign country, it is important that you have the decal sticker on your aircraft. It can simply be purchased at any U.S. Customs office. You can check their website, and you can uh, find out information as to the nearest place to purchase that uh, customs decal. When flying down to the Bahamas, very important as to what you carry in terms of documentation. You must have your pilot's license, your medical, your aircraft registration, airworthiness certificate, and proof of insurance. Most insurance companies do have uh, extended coverage to the Bahamas. If your carrier does not, it is possible for you to actually purchase a rider to insure coverage over to the Bahamas. Okay, again, very important that you have your proof of insurance along with your uh, airworthiness certificate, registration, your pilot's license, and your medical. Very important. On the road to the Bahamas, very important that you do have one U.S. Coast Guard approved life jacket per person. Very important, you must have that, that is required. What is an option is having a life raft, that is not mandatory. Life rafts are optional. However, it is mandatory that you do have a Coast Guard approved life jacket per person. Activate your flight plan before leaving Florida. A Miami Flight Service, you can use 122.2 or Miami Radio 126.7. Prior to landing, make sure that you close your flight plan. Again, ladies and gentlemen, we do not want a Black Hawk searching all around the Great Bahama Bank looking for 41 kilo just because you're on the beach kicking back drinking some Bahama Mamas and you forgot to close your flight plan. Please, please, please. Close your flight plan, okay? If for any reason you are unable to close your flight plan by air, immediately upon landing and clearing customs immigration, proceed to the nearest telephone and close on 1-800-WX-BRIEF. Again, that's part of the reason why we established the Blue Phone Service. We want to ensure that all pilots have access to a dedicated landline for any reason whatsoever. Whether it's calling U.S. Customs prior to your departure or in the event you're unable to close by air, you're able to close at that port of entry. Forms to fill out in terms of paperwork in clearing customs immigration, extremely simple. Prior to about 2002, the forms to fill out would include a Transire uh, general declaration form, a C7 form, and the Bahamas immigration card. In other words, folks, you'd have a multitude of forms to fill out, no longer. What we've done is simplified all the forms needed to clear Bahamas customs immigration. There are only three forms needed, three simple copies of the C7 A form. One copy is retained by Bahamas Customs and Immigration, another copy goes with you, the pilot, and one copy you keep in your plane. That copy acts as what we call the transire. If for any reason you decide to island hop the islands of the Bahamas, and you're asked by a custom officer at a different location, if you cleared before, you simply show them a copy of that form. There's no additional form that you would need to fill out. What's also required per person to fill out is called the Bahamas Immigration Card. That is mandatory, that is one per person. So if you're traveling with five people, all five individuals must fill out a copy of the Bahamas Immigration Card. This copy is retained by yourself and turned in prior to your departure to the United States. What I have here on screen is the copy of the C7A form. As you can see for yourself, it's a very, very simple form, very straightforward. Again, on the flip side, you can actually download this form here in the United States, fill it out in advance, make two or three copies to take with you rather than filling out the forms there in the Bahamas. What we try to do is make the forms very accessible so you take care of your paperwork. We all know how it is 
whether you travel to Canada or you travel to Europe, coming back to the U.S., the problem is every country you go into, you have to deal with Bahamas Customs. Oh, I'm sorry, you have to deal with any customs agency. The thing is, when you go into a foreign destination, the custom officer usually makes or breaks your stay. If you're going for two days or going for two weeks, you have a bad experience going through customs immigration, it sort of puts a damper on your trip. So you want to ensure that you have the forms available to get through the process as quick and as easy as possible. Okay? Again, when entering the islands of the Bahamas, the first thing you do, very important, is land at a dedicated airport of entry. The first port you land in must be an airport of entry. Can't stress that enough. If for some reason, you know, Jimmy and Bob is having a party over on a specific key and you decide to land there before you clear, again, that black horse is going to land down and crash that party. Hey, 4-1 kilo, you never cleared. Have to do it. Mandatory, you must clear customs as soon as you enter the islands of the Bahamas. Close your flight plan. Very, very important again. Present identification, your pilot's license, your proof of citizenship, and for non-U.S. citizens, a passport and a visa may be required. As of January 2007, it is mandatory by U.S. law that every citizen leaving the United States and returning must have in his possession a passport. Again, that's U.S. law. You must have a passport to return. I know some of you are probably saying, well, Keith, I don't plan on coming back. I'm going to sit on the beach the rest of my life and enjoy Bahama Mamas. Well, if that's your plan, go right ahead. Okay? But you will not be allowed to come back home if you do not have a passport. So if for any reason you want to catch Aunt Becky's wedding or Cousin Sue's uh, graduation, you must have that passport to get back home. Again, the forms required, very simple, very easy. Three copies of the General Declaration, which is the C-7A form, one copy of the Bahamas Customs and Immigration card. Be very cooperative with Customs and Immigration. They're humans just like you and me. Some have good days, some have bad days, just like you and me. So be cooperative, smile, just tell them, hey, I just want to get through this process to kick back on the beach, go scuba diving or go snorkeling. That's all I'm interested in. They say stamp your forms, have a good day, carry on. Landing in the Bahamas, very simple, very easy. In the Bahamas, we have over 60 airports, as I indicated earlier. Only two of those airports are controlled airports, Nassau International and Grand Bahama International. That's the only time you have to talk to the tower. Other than that, all of our airports are uncontrolled. Use Unicom frequency 122.8. In the Bahamas, when flying, it's left traffic pattern. Okay? Always remember that in the Bahamas, we drive on the left, we fly on the left. Okay? <clears throat> now, again, very simple, very easy procedure. Communicate, communicate, communicate. If you plan a landing island and all looks clear, and all of a sudden that, uh, you see a little flash in the air, you think, you know, maybe that's a canopy, maybe it's a cockpit. Communicate, communicate, communicate. Hey, this is 41 Kilo. I'm on final heading into Staniel Key. Any pilots in the area uh, heading in on final? Anybody's taking off? Anybody's landing? Anybody's in the vicinity? Please communicate. Communicate, communicate, communicate. Can't stress that enough. It's safety first. You're flying in uncontrolled airspace. Everybody has the right. Communicate, communicate, communicate. All right? One question that we tend to get uh, for pilots flying to and from the Bahamas is concerning experimental aircraft. Experimental aircraft prior to uh, last year uh, had to fill out and make advance notice prior to going to the Bahamas. They had to communicate with uh, National International, communicate with civil aviation, get uh, permission prior to going to the Bahamas, no more, no longer. We adopted the same standard validation that you would use flying from the United States to Canada. It's the same policy that we have in flying the islands of the Bahamas. Very simple, very easy procedure. All that's needed is the valid certificate of aircraft registration. The registration and the uh, registration marks are nationally assigned to that aircraft by the FAA. As long as you have the documentation supplied to you by the FAA that you are certified to fly and leave the United States, we accept that documentation. There's no additional paperwork that you would have to fill out stating that you are flying an experimental aircraft or get any other approval to fly experimental aircraft to the Bahamas. The same validation that you use to fly from the United States to any other country, we accept in the islands of the Bahamas. So we want to ensure that that transition is very easy, very simple. Prior to, like I mentioned, 2002, 2003, the procedure was extremely hazardous for a lot of pilots because they had to communicate with this agency, get approval prior to going over. That puts a damper on your trip if you plan on flying the Bahamas because then you have to get so much permission to fly the Bahamas no longer. Extremely simple. You take off. If your plane is parked behind your house, Hop in a plane, file an international flight plan, head to the Bahamas. 
Again, this idea of some of the scenery one could expect when flying the islands of the Bahamas. You may not fly that plane, but that's the typical scenery of what to expect in the islands of the Bahamas. Again, as I mentioned earlier, one stipulation that we have now in the Private Pilot Bill of Rights is that there is no overtime charge for Bahamas Customs and Immigration. This slide shows you it's a message directly from the Comptroller, the person in charge of Bahamas Customs in the islands of the Bahamas. His mandate to all of his office is to ensure that he makes it easier for all pilots flying the islands of the Bahamas to clear Bahamas Customs and Immigration. So what we've done is ensure that a copy of this message is inside our private pilot guide. It goes to every single pilot. A copy of this message is also on our website at flying.bahamas.com. What it does is educates you, the pilot, in advance of going down to the islands of the Bahamas as to what he or she is entitled to. We want to make sure that there are no surprises, there are no surprise fees when you fly the islands of the Bahamas. You know in advance what you're entitled to, so you know what to expect when you land at any airport of entry in the Bahamas. Again, as stipulated, there's no landing fees for single-engine aircraft under 6,000 pounds. As well, there are no overtime customs and immigration charges. Very important to note, if you land at 9 p.m. Monday night or if you land at 9 a.m. Sunday morning, there's no overtime charge at any government airport in clearing Bahamas customs and immigration. Absolutely, positively, no overtime charges. There are no tie-down fees at any government airport. Some people tend to use private services like that of an FBO in the Bahamas. We have updated uh, state-of-the-art FBOs at both Nassau International, Grand Bahama, and the Abacos, as well as Eleuthera. White Crown Aviation in North Eleuthera. We have Cherokee Air in Marsh Harbor, Abaco. We have Millionaire in Nassau International. And we have Freeport Flight Service in Grand Bahama Island. If using the services of these private individuals, you may be required to pay a particular tie-down fee to use their facility or their part of the realm. However, should you decide to tie down on general aviation tarmac, there's no charge. So important to know when it comes to tie down fees. If somebody's charging you a tie down fee, you have to ask yourself, where am I parked? Am I using the services of a private FBO? Am I at a private airport? If that is the case, then you would be required to pay their fee. But at any government airport, anywhere in the islands of the Bahamas, there's no tie down fees. Again, as I mentioned, fuel availability throughout the islands of the Bahamas. No matter where you are, and we have over 700 islands, 2,000 keys, no matter where you are in the islands of the Bahamas, if the island that you're staying at does not have fuel, you're no more than 20 minutes away flying time from fuel. No matter where you are in the islands of the Bahamas, if you're as far south as Inagua, as far north as Walker's Key, you're never more than 20 minutes flying time from fuel. Very important to note, as long as you have a 20 minute reserve, you can party all night long, you can fly all the islands of the Bahamas. As long as you have a 20 minute reserve, if the last port you're at does not have fuel, you're still within fuel capability, okay? You're never more than 20 minutes maximum flying time from fuel. Night flying, as I mentioned, only Nassau and Freeport have ILS capability. Those are the only two islands that have it. There are five established FBOs within the islands of the Bahamas, as I mentioned. Two based in Nassau, millionaire and executive. Grand Bahama has Freeport Flight Service. North Eleuthera has White Crown Aviation. And Abaco Island has Cherokee Air. A concern for pilots in flying the islands of the Bahamas is, of course, maintenance and repair. What happens if something happens to my aircraft? Very easy, very simple. All of those FBOs I mentioned have a program whereby they're willing to fly a mechanic to your location within the islands of the Bahamas. Also, Banyan Air Service, based in uh, South Florida, for Lauderdale Executive, has a program where they'll fly a Cherokee with a mechanic to any destination within the islands of the Bahamas to ensure that you have maintenance and repairs. Again, a broken down aircraft, out of fuel, out of gas, is not that big a concern within the islands of the Bahamas. You're never more than a phone call away from full service and getting airborne again. No matter where you are in the islands of the Bahamas, you have that access, you have that capability. On average, the runway length in the Bahamas would be about 5,000 feet. NASA International, Grand Bahama International have runways of 11,000 feet. My grandmother could land a plane there, okay? Weather information in the Bahamas, available on 1-800-WX-BRIEF. It's a dedicated telephone line service, as I mentioned, at every airport of entry. Also within the islands of the Bahamas, 242-377-7178. 
will get you the same information as 1-800-WX-BRIEF. Very important to note when leaving the Bahamas, what do I do to make sure that I don't run afoul of U.S. Customs or any U.S. airspace regulations? You must depart the islands of the Bahamas from an airport of entry, which means the last airport that you leave in the islands of the Bahamas must have Bahamas Customs and Immigration capability. What you must do is file your international flight plan, again, at the dedicated phone service I mentioned. The blue phones are dedicated just for your use. So if for any reason you didn't get a chance to call from the hotel or you're running late, you didn't get a chance to call from anywhere within the terminal, there's a dedicated telephone service, a blue phone, just for general aviation use only. On that telephone, you simply call 1-800-WX-BRIEF, you file your international flight plan. What you do is you call and you advise customs, give them an ETA, your estimated time of arrival, the aircraft and passenger details, who's on board, how many people are on board, what is their nationality. That information will be asked for you from the, from the U.S. Customs Officer. Provide them with that information. What they will do in turn is give you a dedicated transponder code. You must squawk that code 15 minutes prior to penetrating the ADIS zone. For those of you that are not aware, the ADIS zone is no, no more than an imaginary line between the United States and the Bahamas. Prior to penetrating that ADIS zone, you simply squawk that dedicated transponder code. What you do uh, when clearing Bahamas Customs and Immigration, you give them a copy of that general declaration that you have. You turn in your immigration card, which you will have retained from clearing in the beginning. You show them a copy of your flight plan. On our end, this ensures that your safety is paramount. What it does is you give the custom officer a copy of your flight plan. They, in turn, have a record of when you were estimated to depart the Bahamas, when you were estimated to arrive at your destination. Again, flight following is a redundant system. It's making sure that someone at all times is aware of where you're going and when you plan to be there. We don't want to get calls all the time. Mom never showed up. Dad never showed up. No. We want to ensure that we're able to make sure that we can say for sure, okay, you know, 41 Kilo was supposed to leave Chubb Key at 1430 Zulu. They were supposed to arrive at their destination, 1840 Zulu. Here's the information we received. Here's the information you have. Okay, fine. We know where they are. That's the whole point to make sure that we know at all times that your safety is paramount. What's required in the Bahamas as far as fees is one departure tax. That is all that every person, Bahamian and visitor, pays when departing the islands of the Bahamas. A $15 departure tax per person is the only fee encumbered with flying the islands of the Bahamas. There are no additional fees or any fees that you pay to fly our islands. As I mentioned, that departure tax is mandatory for even myself. I have to pay it as well. Okay? So it's not just you, it's also me. After takeoff, you activate your flight plan. You can contact either Nassau or Freeport Radio on 124.2 or 128.0. Okay? If you're unable for any reason to contact Nassau or Freeport Radio, you can contact Miami Radio on 126.7. For flight following, that service is also available on Miami Radio or Nassau Radio on 121.0. Okay? Again, the whole point of the matter is Safety, safety, safety. You want to ensure that your flight plan is filed. It's open and activated. Flight following is a peace of mind for a lot of people. You're flying from the islands of the Bahamas. You want to ensure that you get your debt to your destination very, very safely. Again, as I mentioned, entering the United States airspace. You want to ensure that you have that transponder code from flight service station at least 15 minutes prior to penetrating that ADIS zone. Okay. If for any reason you have not received that code, we ask that you circle the vicinity and make sure you get that before you penetrate that ADIS zone. It's a bit disheartening when you're flying that Cessna uh, 172 and an F-16 rockets past, hey, who are you? You know, that, that could make or break a whole trip. Okay, that, that, trust me, that, 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 I've seen some planes flying around here, a B-2 and an F-18. If I'm in a 172 and one of those things goes past, that, that'll make my trip, trust me. That's a memory. Again, close your flight plan in the air. Once you have the airport in sight or you're in familiar terrain, close your flight plan. You have a, a variety of frequencies to do that on, 122.2 or 126.7. If for any reason, again, when you land, you're unable to close your flight plan in the air, please proceed at the nearest phone and do that on 1-800-WX-BRIEF. Again, 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 safety, safety, safety. Ensure that your flight plan is open and activated as soon as you take off. Ensure that it's closed prior to landing. If for any reason you're unable to close that flight plan prior to landing, as soon as you do, proceed to the nearest custom officer and the nearest uh, payphone, call, close your flight plan. 
When landing, you must land. Your first destination must be at an airport of entry here in the United States. From uh, Tamiami Airport, as far north as Fort Pierce, you can pick your destination. If for any reason you're flying at, to points further north, your flight plan may dictate that you land at an airport further north than South Florida. Please make sure that the airport that you're dedicated to land in is a dedicated airport of entry. You must clear U.S. Customs and Immigration immediately upon arrival. Very important. Wait for your customs instructions. These guys are in charge. Okay? Their reason is to protect their country just like our customs officers enable themselves to protect our country. So await the instructions. Be patient. They're human, as I mentioned, just like we are. Okay? They're attempted to mood swings just like we are. Please ensure that you have enough time where you're not rushing and then you're harassing the customs officer. He, in turn, starts harassing you. They are the law. Okay? You cannot win. <laughs> Okay? Prepare your U.S. arrival report and your customs declaration cards. If you're able to have that in advance, that does ensure that your trip goes through a lot smoother. If not, patience, patience, patience. Take your time and go through the procedures. It will be through as quickly as possible. In the islands of the Bahamas and the Bahamas Ministry of Tourism, what we have done to encourage the first-time aviator to fly to the Bahamas Islands is incorporate a program called the Bahamas Fly-Ins. These programs run on a monthly basis. We usually run 12 to 13 every year. The Bahamas Flying Program is a fun, uh, it's an atmosphere whereby the new aviator can get his wings, can get the experience of flying to an international destination. It's a very easy, very simple process. Okay? It's a great experience. It's a good way to ensure camaraderie in the aviation community, particularly for the new aviator who just got his wings. Okay? You just get your license and you want to fly someplace, you want to do something fun, you want to do something different. Fly to Islands of the Bahamas. Our program ensures that you're able to fly with experienced aviators who've been to the Islands of the, uh, uh, sorry, the Islands of the Bahamas before, and at the same time, you're flying with other new student pilots who've just got their license, who wanted to have the same experience that you're asking for. Again, as I mentioned, a great way to introduce you, the pilot, and your family to the aviation community and what it entails flying from one country to another. Very easy, very simple process. It's ideal for a flying club or a flying association or just a group of friends who want to get together and fly to a particular destination. A very easy, very simple process. The format for flying the islands of the Bahamas, the lead pilot is going to give you a full pilot's briefing on what to expect in terms of destination, hotel accommodations, the entire experience in filling out the forms and paperwork to clear Bahamas Customs and Immigration. What we do we escort you from the beginning straight through to the end. From your destination airport here in the Bahamas to your host airport in the islands of the Bahamas and back home again. We're with you the entire duration of the trip. From flight planning to the flight following to landing to partying on the beach to coming back home safely. We're there with you. We're never going to take you airborne and say, okay, 4-1 kilo head straight on south into Bimini. Call me when you get back. No, we're there with you. We're there with you the entire duration of the trip. The registration fee to take part in the Bahamas Flying Program is $40. That $40 fee covers the cocktail reception, welcome to the Bahamas reception. It covers a gift bag, uh, including uh, Bahamas giveaway items. It covers items from the host hotel, the host destination. And what it does is provide you with all the forms and all the paperwork required to fly the islands of the Bahamas. For more information on that particular program, you can check our website at flying.bahamas.com. Okay? Again, it's a very, very fun-filled way to experience the islands of the Bahamas if you've never done it before or if you just want to fly with a group of pilots and just enjoy that camaraderie. It's a great way to enjoy the islands of the Bahamas. All the information that I provided you with in flying islands of the Bahamas can be found on our website at flying.bahamas.com. If for any reason you just want to call our office and just walk you through the paperwork or walk you through the procedures, our 800 number, 1-800-327-7678, is available. Again, another 800 number to call us on is 1-800-32-SPORT. I know that we have a, a video uh, that we're going to use to show you the procedures. Everything that I've been through in this presentation will be encumbered on that video. You can also call our office or check our website to have the copy of that video mailed to you. Okay. This is the idea, just some of the scenery one could expect in flying the islands of the Bahamas. That's not a computer-generated image. That is actually it. That is the Bahamas. This is what you can expect when flying. Okay? 
700 islands, 2,000 keys. That's all I have to say. That's it. Okay? Again, a very fun-filled way to experience the Bahamas. Fly with a group of friends. Join our flying program. Or just contact your, lo your local association or flying club and ask them if they have any Bahamas trips. Very easy, very simple. A very, very easy way to experience another destination, the Bahamas. We're close. We're safe. We're right next door. Okay? Uh, I don't know if you guys want to cue the video. Uh, just give them an idea. Kiss my mama goodbye. Going back to the island, I say, don't worry, mama, don't cry. Hello, I'm John Obradovich, and my wife and I published the Bahamas and Caribbean Pilot's Guide. First, let's just say that when you fly to the Bahamas, the hardest flying you'll do is when you go from wherever you live to Florida. That, that's a lot more difficult in terms of restricted airspace and terrain and weather. When you get to the Bahamas, there is no terrain. The highest point is 200 feet above sea level, and the weather is almost always ideal. It's 44 miles from the shoreline to, to the first island, which is Bimini. And from Bimini on, there's virtually an island in sight all the time. Uh, there's large land masses as well as there's small islands, but you always seem to have land in sight and an island in sight. Visiting the islands of the Bahamas. You must file a U.S. international flight plan before departing the U.S. and your first point of arrival in the Bahamas must be at an airport of entry. Each person aboard the aircraft must have proof of citizenship, a passport, or a birth certificate. Keep your aircraft registration available and check that your aircraft insurance policy extends to the Bahamas. Most do. All airplanes must have a Mode C transponder, 12-inch registration numbers on the plane, and one U.S. Coast Guard approved life jacket for each person. Life rafts are suggested, but not required. Vests and optional life raft equipment can be inexpensively rented at most FBOs in South Florida. At typical cruise altitudes, radio reception is fine. Speaking with a choice of Miami or Nassau radio. Nassau approach, Mooney, 88 Echo Fox Trot. 88 Echo Fox, go ahead. Yeah, I'm going to cancel flight following at this time. Uh, airport's in sight. Hi, I'm Craig Payton, producer of this DVD. Flying out here is easy, and the radios work fine. Both Bahamas Approach and Nassau Center have remotes throughout the islands. Customs is a no-brainer. You land, you fill out a C7A form. Once you get stamped, then you're free to island hop until you leave the country. Offshore weather is usually good VFR. Because of the Gulf Stream's moderating influence, the weather generally remains in the 70s and 80s year-round. For trouble-free navigation, GPS is your best bet. With VORs and ILS approaches in Freeport and Nassau. It can get a little breezy out here in the islands. And I've also found from water to land, you have to consider wind shear. I carry a little bit of extra speed on final. I don't try to plant the plane right on the numbers. Upon arriving, you must land at an airport of entry the first time you enter the islands. Normal hours for customs are 9 a.m. to 5.30 p.m. Clearing customs is no problem. All you do is fill out the Bahamian immigration card, one per person, and four copies of the C7A form. With this single permit, you can island hop with ease. The Bahamian government has developed a private pilot's bill of rights. No landing fees for single engine private planes under 6,000 pounds. No overtime customs and immigration fees for private aircraft visiting for recreational purposes. And no tie down fees at any government owned airport. The islands of the Bahamas begin 55 miles off the Florida coast and are made up of 700 islands, 30 of which are inhabited, covering a vast area of 100,000 square miles. Avgas is currently available at nine airports in the islands. You are never more than 20 minutes flying time away from fuel. Avgas prices are similar to Florida's FBOs. There's good FBOs throughout the country. Marsh Harbor, Freeport, Nassau, but also I carry a card from FBOs in Florida. Banyan, for instance, will send a Cherokee with a mechanic to your location if you need repairs in a hurry. And that's nice to know that help is only a couple hours away. When departing, surrender your copy of the immigration card and pay departure tax of $15 per person. You must file an international flight plan with 800 WX Brief.
or Nassau radio in the air. Before takeoff, you are required to contact U.S. Customs at your airport of entry at least one hour before arrival, notifying them of your exact arrival time. A phone call is the only way to comply. Once in the air, you must contact Miami Radio 15 minutes before penetrating the ADIZ, just past Bimini. Hi, I'm David Grantham. I'm a pilot for United States Customs and Border Protection in New Orleans. Also this year, I'm the chair-elect of the International Federal Pavilion here at Oshkosh. One of the places we enjoy going is the Bahamas, and a lot of us are always a little apprehensive about clearing customs into or out of the Bahamas. This year, if you're going to travel, make sure you make your one-hour call to the U.S. Customs Service prior to coming back into the United States. And we assure you, we don't want to hold you up clearing customs back into the States. Make your call. Try to have as much paperwork done as possible, greet the customs officer, and we'll get you through as quick as we possibly can. Thank you. The Bahamas.com website has a very informative section under Activities Flying. There you'll find important phone numbers, tips, and questions answered. Another popular way to experience the islands, the Bahamas Tourist Office has incorporated fly-in. The fly-ins provide for discounted hotel and sports activity rates. Uh, I'm flying over water, I don't feel there's any uh, more dangerous or troublesome than flying over the land. You got a plane, you got a playground over here. It's very easy. Feel free to call the Bahamas Tourist Office at 800-327 7678 anytime. So fly on over and we'll see you in the islands. I'll be cooking outside in the iron pot so young when I learn I haven't forgot how to catch them. The folks after seeing that video, who won't go to the Bahamas? I mean that make me want to go and I'm from there. So you know I won't go to the Bahamas. I know you want to go to the Bahamas. Let's do this. At uh, this time, I'd like to ask, are there any questions or concerns after seeing the video and hearing the presentation? Are there any concerns at all with flying down to the Bahamas? Yes, sir. That's correct. It would be like sunset. Yeah. Again, the problem with night flying is the lack of capability in the, in the out islands. The only two islands that have ILS capability would be Nassau International and Grand Bahama International. We have extended lights to some out island airports. However, those lights are reserved for emergency use only. Those airports do not have ILS capability. Again, to ensure your safety, we don't want to encourage something that we ourselves can't guarantee. So we'd rather reserve that until we have ILS capability at those airports, we try to restrict the night flying capability to those airports. Again, the whole point being not to restrict your flight, but to ensure your safety. Are there any other concerns? Yes, sir. Yeah, so I'd like to ask, uh, do you have to have two flight plans? The, I, I got here late, so I didn't hear what you were talking about earlier. Sure. As far as either departing or coming back into the U.S., do you have to have a, a Bahamas flight plan also? Because I've, I've been a couple of times, and that's the way I did it, because that's the way I was told there. I filed with the Bahamas a separate flight plan with the, I can't remember how I called the local number, but I also called back. The, to the states and filed a flight plan also. But this was IFR, mm -hmm. it wasn't VFR. Well, and that, is that, do you have to do that? I, I didn't no, catch everything. No, uh, simply when filing a flight plan, you just file one flight plan, whether it's IFR or VFR. Okay. Uh, the fact that you did it twice, it, I guess that was by choice. But okay. it's not required, no sir. If that's, not, if that's the question you're asking, is it mandatory? No, it's it is not, not mandatory. mandatory. Okay. okay, so they should have it in the tower if I file IFR on the one yes, sir. WX brief, they should have it. Okay. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thanks. No problem. Any other concerns or questions? Yes, sir. Uh, one more quick question. The um, fuel situation, did, does your website have current availability on fuel? Yes, sir, we do. Okay. It's on a website. Again, uh, we're here exhibiting at Sun and Fun. If you uh, go by our booth, uh, B72, you can also pick up what's called a private pilot guide. That I guide lists every single airport, the fuel availability of that airport, and the runway lengths. So you have all information on each individual airport, whether or not it has fuel, whether or not the air, all airports on the island have fuel or do not have fuel. That information is available both on our website yeah. and in our private pilot guide. And that, that can be relied on? 
Yes, sir, it can. Okay, thank you. Yes, sir. For island hopping, I was told that you had to obtain a cruising permit. Is that correct? No, sir. Okay. When you clear Bahamas Customs and Immigration, again, you fill out three copies of the C-78 form. What you're referring to was in the old days, you fill out a separate form called a transire. That is no longer required. The C-78 form that you fill out will act as your transire. You simply retain a copy of that in your plane and on your person. When flying from island to island, if asked by a custom officer, if you clear before, you simply show a copy of the form which would state and it's stamp showing that you have already cleared customs and immigration. Flying to Addis of the Bahamas or island hopping is just as easy as flying to Miami, renting a car and driving to Nebraska. It's that easy. There's no additional paperwork that you'd have to fill out. There's no additional concern you'd have to worry yourself with. Once you fly and clear customs and immigration, you're free to explore our country. Thank you. All right. Again, folks, I want to ensure one thing. It's very, very easy to fly to Bahamas. I know a lot of times people say, well, I'm going to a foreign country. You know, I don't want to get stuck. Uh, I don't want to get charged with any fees. I don't want a guy coming to my car, my uh, aircraft with an M16. You know, I don't want anybody coming to my hotel room, banging the door, dragging me out to prison in the middle of the night. That's not the Bahamas. That's a movie, okay? That's not the Bahamas. Flying to the Bahamas is just as safe as flying from Lakeland to Fort Pierce. It's that easy, it's that simple. 46 miles off the coast of Florida, paradise begins. It's very easy to fly, fly to the Bahamas. There's no question, no concern that's considered dumb or I don't want anybody else to hear me say this, trust me. If there's a question that you have in flying to the Bahamas, we've heard it before, okay? So feel free. All your questions, that's why we're here. That's why we work in conjunction with the FAA production studios to air your concerns and answer them. So please feel free. Sir, you had a question? Uh, the islands look pretty uh, compact, I guess. Rental cars are not even necessary as far as transportation once you get there? On some islands, okay. For us in the Bahamas, distance isn't a big concern to us. You know, most of our islands are maybe right. 30 miles long or maybe 40 miles wide, the most. Here in the United States, rental cars is a concern. What we have in the Bahamas, on a lot of different islands, on a lot of keys are rental golf carts. Uh, for those of you that know uh, using golf carts, sometimes you can walk faster than a golf cart. So again, a uh, rental car or a rental golf cart, that's not a major concern. The information provided in our private pilot guide gives you air airport information for every single island. What you can do is call in advance and say, you know, hey, I'm planning on flying into Staniel Key or uh, I'm flying into Farmer's Key. Do you guys have public transportation nearby? Do I need it to get to my airport, uh, my hotel destination, I'm sorry? Do I need a rental car? Do I need a golf cart? Can I just walk there with my luggage? Can I walk and uh, leave my wife at the plane? Or can I walk and leave my husband at the plane? You know, it's, it's easy. And the most destinations you find in the Isles of Bahamas, the host hotel is usually right near the airport or not far. If, for example, you're flying to, let's just say, a destination like Harbor Island, you fly and land at North Luther Airport. You then take a taxi cab or uh, rental transportation to the ferry dock, a five-minute ferry, you're on the island, a two-minute golf cart ride or a three-minute walk, you're at your hotel. So distance and time is relative in the Bahamas. It's more laid back. Distance is nothing to us. You're in the Bahamas. Kick back, relax. When you get there, you get there. Okay? So it's not, it's not the hustle and bustle. You're going to the Bahamas. You're not going to New York City. There's no hustle and bustle. Time is irrelevant, folks. You're going to paradise. You're going to relax. Anyone else with a question? Yes, sir. I know last year there was, there was work going on between the uh, government of the Bahamas and the U.S. regarding uh, special light sport aircraft permitting. Correct. Has that been resolved and concluded and what was the outcome? Yes, sir. I'm proud here today to announce that light sport aircraft as of last month received full recognition to fly to the islands of the Bahamas without any advance notice. Again, what we adopted, similar to the experimental aircraft, is the same standardization you would use flying your light sport from the United States into Canada. So I'm proud to announce, uh, the last few days I've had people asking the very same question at our booth. And again, I'm proud to announce that yes, that issue has been resolved. Light sport aircraft are welcome to fly down to the Bahamas. Again, the requirement being that you must have the 12 inch numbers. Okay, so you can get temporary numbers to put on your aircraft to fly down to the Bahamas, but there's no advance notification required. Just like if you fly a, a Bonanza to the Bahamas or a Mooney, you can fly a light sport to the Bahamas. Just pick up and go. Okay, very easy, very simple procedures. File an international flight plan. You take a copy of your uh, airworthiness certificate as well as your certificate of registration. 
and you simply file and fly to Islands of the Bahamas. Very easy, very simple. Is there any concerns out there that I haven't addressed or anything else you just want clarification on? It's not a bother. That's what we're here for. A concern a lot of people tend to have, again, maintenance and repair. As you saw in the video, very easy, very simple to get that result. You're never more than a few hours away than having your aircraft airborne again. Regardless of whether you have a flat tire or a spark plug out or you just need to get rid of another passenger, it's very easy. You're never more than a phone call away. Again, what a lot of pilots tend to do, as mentioned in the video, is carry a card from an FBO that you're familiar with here in South Florida. If you're not familiar with the FBO here in South Florida, we in the Islands of the Bahamas have uh, dedicated a few FBOs in South Florida as Bahamas specialists. These FBO managers have took it upon themselves to approach us and said, how can we assist in making it easier for pilots to fly the islands of the Bahamas and get the services that they need in case those needs arrive? Again, there's a copy of that listing on our website at flying.bahamas.com and it's also available inside our private pilot guide. So definitely, folks, there's no need for any concerns regarding fuel, aircraft safety, maintenance and repair. The only concern you should have is relaxation. That's the only word you associate with the Bahamas, relaxation. You fly, you land, you relax. That's it. That's all it is to fly the islands of the Bahamas. A uh, concern that uh, one person mentioned to me a few days ago was, Keith, if I fly the islands of the Bahamas and I fly a seaplane, where do I go to clear customs immigration? It's not a concern for most aviators, but for those few that, that love their seaplanes or their amphibious aircraft, that is a major concern. The Bahamas Civil Aviation Authority is currently uh, reviewing ways to regulate and ensure that seaplane arrivals to the Bahamas do not have to all land at Nassau International or Grand Bahama International to clear customs and immigration. What they're doing right now is trying to identify certain seaplane areas that they could designate as seaplane bases. I know here in the United States, in order to fly from point to point in a seaplane, you have to land at a dedicated seaplane base, which would be on a lake or a uh, uh, body of water that's dedicated as a seaplane base. In the Bahamas, there are only two places that are designated seaplane bases. One is Bimini, and the other is Nassau International. So as of right now, what they're doing is trying to identify other places to encourage the seaplane traffic from the United States to visit all islands that we offer. It's only common sense. I mean, you look at the tranquil waters, you look at what we have, the beaches, the coves, the beautiful bays. It's a beautiful place to island hop, and a beautiful way to island hop by landing a seaplane throughout the islands. You're talking about 700 islands and 2,000 keys. That's a lot more water than there is runways. So if I'm a seaplane operator, I definitely want to see that regulation come through. As of right now, they are undergoing the, uh, re a review of that regulation, and we hope to have an answer fr from them for you prior to the end of the summer. Again, folks, this is the Bahamas. Everything is laid back, even government. Okay, so you know, sometimes you may hear when it comes to regulation, soon come, man. It soon come. I can't tell you when, but it soon come. All right. Uh, I'm trying to figure out if I addressed anything. Oh, one concern that a lot of aviators have is regarding bringing a pet to the Bahamas. And bringing a pet to the Bahamas, whether it be cats, dogs, husbands, is a very simple procedure. Okay. All you simply need to do is fill out a copy of the pet application. That application can be obtained from my office in Fort Lauderdale. Again, you can either check our website at flying.bahamas.com or call us at 1-800-32-SPORT. You simply request a copy of the PET application. We send a copy to you anywhere you are in the United States. You fill out a copy of that along with a $10 international money order. You send a copy of that down to the Bahamas, to Nassau, and they in turn send you a copy of the PET permit. Very important is this. You must have a copy of that permit in your possession before you come to the Bahamas. You can't land with uh, the PET Labrador and say, well, they're supposed to send me one it never came, you know, soon come on. No, no, no. That doesn't work, okay? You have to have a copy of the actual permit in your possession before you enter the Bahamas, okay? So regarding bringing pets, simply call our office. We will send you a copy of the pet application. You fill that out with a $10 international money order. Send it down to Nassau. They, in turn, send you the actual permit. The turnaround time is usually anywhere from 5 to 10 days. So it's very quick, very simple procedure. Is there any concern that I have not addressed that anybody could think of? Throw it at me, please, 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 throw it at me. Let me see, is there any concern here that an aviator might have? Uh, how many VFR days are there? Okay, there's 365 throughout the year. I'd roughly estimate 365 in the Bahamas. 
You have that much VFR uh, flying days in the Bahamas. Uh, vision within the Bahamas, you can see for miles once you're airborne. There's very little haze, very little cloudy skies. You may see scattered clouds. And thunderstorms, if, they, if you do encounter them, usually last anywhere from two to three hours. The only place you tend to uh, undergo any weather, I, I could definitely say without any hesitation, would be over the actual island itself. If you notice carefully when flying down to the Bahamas, if you fly from island to island, you may see a group of scattered clouds over the island. Then there'd be miles where it's just clear sky, and then there's a group of clouds on the horizon. That's because you're approaching land. Most clouds tend to form over any land mass. Well, same thing applies with us here in the Bahamas. You find scattered clouds throughout the islands of the Bahamas, but very, very little inclement weather that would prohibit your flying. Again, very, very easy, very simple procedure, and excellent, excellent, excellent VFR flying in the islands of the Bahamas. Now, the types of aircraft you, I would recommend you use, anything that could get airborne. Whatever, whatever floats your boat, whatever aircraft you like, that's the best aircraft to fly the islands of the Bahamas. And again, Average runway length, 5,000 feet. Now, of course, if you're flying a Citation or that Lear jet, you may want to think once or twice about landing at, let's just say, Rum Key or any small destination with a 1,500-foot runway. You know, you may just end up in the bay. But outside of that, folks, you can fly any island you want in the Bahamas. Over 50 airports throughout the entire country, a lot of destinations, a lot of things to see and do. One thing I'd like to encourage aviators to do is experience all we have to offer. You're already ahead of the game because you're a pilot, so you're experiencing something that a lot of people on a general vacation will not experience. You get to see the Bahamas from the air. Once you land, engage in snorkeling, engage in diving. See all we have to offer. Take part in some of our festivals. One particular festival that's coming up right now uh, this week is called the Family Island Regatta. That's a sight to behold. For those of you that don't know what the regatta is, it's Bahamian sloops, old fishing boats, what we call like smack boats, with huge canvas sails. Not the typical America's Cup type uh, vessel, but our old Bahamian type vessels with these huge canvas sails. The sails are usually bigger than the boat. Again, this occurs next week uh, and runs through till the first week of May. It's definitely a sight to behold. So anybody planning a trip within the next two weeks, I'd encourage you to make a stop in Georgetown Exuma to see the family out in regatta. Uh, if there's any other time of the year that I would recommend you go down, it'd definitely be Christmas. There's a national festival called Junkanoo. And that festival and parade usually takes place the day after Christmas, which is called Boxing Day, and again on New Year's Day. It's colorful. Uh, the parade in Trinidad has nothing on it in terms of color, in terms of sound, sights. You will not be disappointed. Okay? Now, if there are any questions regarding flying the islands of the Bahamas, I'll be here at Sun and Fun until the close, booth B72. Please feel free to stop by and see how I am. Okay? Any questions, any concerns? Folks, it's been a pleasure. I want to thank you, the FAA Production Studios, for having us. We enjoy being here, and we hope to see you guys again next year. Thank you. Very Pleasure. well done. Yes, oh, sir. You're nice. too professional. <laughs> oh, man. You guys are pros. <laughs> thank you so much. Oh, thank you. Yeah.